couple of years ago, I was lucky to come to Namibia working for the Australian Development Agency and uh, ended up on a project called the Wynum River Catchment Study in northwest Namibia and uh, that's where we met. Um, and one of the things that we were looking at was interaction of wildlife people, uh, livestock related to water and giraffe and elephant interactions was something we started to focus on. Um, and the more and more we looked at it, there was no information. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do is, you know, I, I started a master's, ended up being a PhD, and, and since then we've just kept going and going and we've done lots of work on giraffe across the whole continent. And 10 years ago, basically this year, we created mm -hmm. the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're quite lucky. I think uh, it's grown from strength to strength. First, it was all volunteer, and uh, since 2014, we've been full-time working on giraffe conservation management efforts across the continent. Today we work in 15 African countries, working with lots of governments, NGOs, academics. I mean, the most amazing thing we, we found out is that there is actually four species of giraffe. People always thought there's just one species and nine subspecies, but we have been collecting DNA samples of giraffe all over Africa for the last 20 years. Um, and the samples are analysed in Germany at the Senckenberg Museum. And we just set out to figure out what is going on with giraffe. Um, we didn't really have any agenda. Or we didn't expect to find anything super significant. But when the guys did the analysis in the lab, they realised, hang on, these guys are really, really different. So there is four species of giraffe and some of them are in serious trouble. And that obviously has immense conservation implications. Good day, everyone. Um, so I'm here with Emma from Giraffe Conservation Foundation. Good morning, Hello. Emma. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. Good. So we're out here in the in the Guantukhab River in the Doranaus Conservancy, um, in the joint management area with Ubisan and Sorosaurus Conservancies. Um, and we've been driving around the morning. We've seen lots of giraffe tracks, mm -hmm. um, but no actual giraffe. This is the first, first one we've seen. First one we've seen this morning. Yep. Um, so. Emma, we, we're about to go through a process now. Can you just sort of tell me um, what we're going to be experiencing with the idea of a giraffe, what we're looking for, what we what our aims and goals are, um, and then sort of the broader picture where it all, all leads to? Sure. The first thing you want with, a, with an ID is to try and get a nice broadside photo. Okay. Um, you've seen when a giraffe bends, it distorts all its spots. Yeah. So the straighter on it is, the better for us. Okay. Every giraffe has unique pattern, just yeah. like our fingerprints. Yeah. So you can tell them apart just by looking at those spot patterns. So if we can get a right side and a left um, of all the giraffe in the area, which is what we'll aim to do over however long, yeah. then at least when you guys are out with the guides or the conservancy, you can look through the books and say, that's this female over here. Yeah. Um, over time, once you've got all those giraffe identified, you can monitor where they are, who they're hanging out with, how far they're traveling, just by checking those IDs, recording GPS, um, numbers in the herd, all the things we're going to be doing today. So okay. it's, right. yeah, it's a fairly simple process. And that's a perfect angle. Because the neck is straight, the body is... Yep. And the light is good. On. And then the, the next question is the the ID sample or the DNA sample, which yep. we'll we'll get into just now, but now, sort of, I know that sort of in the far northwest, you guys have ID numbers for for all the giraffe. Do mm -hmm. you just want to explain to me how that sort of ID number works? Sure. Um, you know, the just from the letters to the numbers. So our ones, um, we've got the Huanib, which is HNB. So very simple. Yeah. HNB for Huanib, and then you've got M or F for male or female. Okay. If it's a juvenile, it's um, U All right. until we've sexed it. Um, and then it's the number. So okay. it's just a sequential number. Um, so so what, actually, what, what would you like? Would it be KWB for Guantukhab? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can do that. So, so KWB. KWB. And it's an M. And then it's an M. And, and then, then what? Zero, zero, 001. Zero, zero, 001. Zero, zero, 001. Perfect. We have officially ID'd our first giraffe in the Guantukhab. How have. cool is that? That's very cool. <laughs> and I'm going to get a better right photo of him while he's standing there. Okay. 
Cool. So, Emma, this is a process that our guides are going to be helping you with, and we're going to set it up at the lodge, and mm -hmm. this will all sort of feed back to the conservancy so that they can better management. And, you know, we're going to be partnering and, mm. and working on getting that all developed. So thank you very much for, for showing us how this whole process works. You're welcome. Really appreciate it, and awesome. let's see how much data we can collect. Sounds good. Cool. He's the first draft that you guys are going to be sort of working on in this area. And one of the steps you guys take is to take a DNA biopsy mm -hmm. of, of, of the giraffe. Um, w just explain us the process that we're going to be going through, um, collecting the, the biopsy and then, and, and then what it's used for. Cool. All right, so hopefully we're going to get up fairly close to him yeah. <laughs> and not spook him. Um, so, yeah, we, we're just using a... Um, a dart, w w uh, sorry, a gun okay. that takes a, a dart like this. Yeah. It's very simple. For them, it's like a bee sting when it hits yeah. them. They react more to the noise than they do to this. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that it's going to hit him and it's going to um, collect a, sorry, um, a small sample of tissue. Okay. Okay, and when it does, it's just going to bounce straight back out. We're going to collect that sample. All right. Um, and then add it to our massive database. What we are looking at is, is more the species side of it at the moment. Okay. Um, from all the sampling that's been done over the last 15 years or so, yep. we know that these guys are Angolan giraffe, okay. um, subspecies of the southern giraffe. So that's what we're, we're looking at, the broader picture of species. Um, yep. And then in time, we do hope to figure out who is who, and then maybe we can use that for managing population. It should have bounced out. Oh, you got it. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So here's the dot. This is where the giraffe was standing. It was feeding on this bush. And like Emma said, she went for the back right leg. Mm -hmm. um, popped in, dropped out. Um, and cool. Let's see. There we go. And there's the sample. You can yeah. see it in the end there. So we've got awesome. a bit of his skin in here. Um, we'll, once we get back to the car, we'll take it out and put it in a little tube and then we can show everybody what it looks like. Brilliant. Well done. Good shot. Yep. Cool. So Emma, we've we just re recovered the, the dart from the young male that we um, found this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, shot went right into the back leg. Um, it got its piece of um, skin in there. Um, so if you can just show us what you're going to do and just sort of walk us through the next process and what happens from here. Sure. Okay, well we've got, um, I'll get you to help me. Yep. Um, so I've got a little vial there that's got ethanol, so that'll preserve the sample when we and, get it out. And ethanol is, I mean, it's just pure alcohol. Yes, yeah, it's, so just it's, to it's keep like 90% it. alcohol okay. or 70%. Yeah, it just yeah. keeps it until we can get it to the lab to uh, get it processed. Yeah. So just a simple pair of pliers. pliers. Yep. So when we unscrew this, the top here, Okay, so we'll just take that off carefully. Oh, okay. So the sample is in the in the is, tube is there. In the tube. Ah, okay. So we can maybe just poke right. it through with the needle. Yeah. So what we'll do take that out. All right. So if you open your little bottle, hopefully. So it's not a huge sample, but it's enough. There you go, just that tiny bit of skin. Okay, so you can see it now in the bottom of this vial. We have our little bit of skin, um, and this is now going to get sent off for DNA testing. For, for DNA testing, yeah. yeah. Um, we've just been out with Emma. Um, we found our first giraffe in the river um, after seeing lots of activity in the river, but you know, finding the first one. Yeah. Um, and we, we were able to ID it as, as a young male, um, and then she was also able to collect a biopsy sample. Um, do you just want to tell us what, what, what's the next step with that biopsy sample? Where does it go to from here? So yeah, no, I mean, it's always exciting to get another DNA sample. So it's a tissue sample, it uses a drop dart that hits the giraffe, falls out, gives a good chunk of tissue. And what we're using it for is we're trying to assess the whole sort of genetics of Namibia. Predominantly, we assume they're all Angolan giraffe, which is a subspecies of the southern giraffe. Yep. Um, but 
Some South African giraffe also do exist in Babwata National Park and they come naturally from South Africa. Yeah. Uh, but the rest of it, we assume they're Angolan. So we're doing a Namibia wide survey. It's a good time at, during COVID <laughs> to also expand what we're doing in the country. And we're doing similar in many countries yeah. right as we speak. Okay. So those samples, uh, we collect them and we eventually send them off to our partner, Zenkenberg Museum in Germany. Um, and that is part of also a wider Africa study. We've been looking at uh, giraffe genetics uh, for at least 15 years now. Yeah. Um, and we're pretty interesting findings, in all honesty. We figured out there's at least four species of giraffe. Okay. Um, we have the southern, which consists of two subspecies, which is the Angolan and the South African giraffe. Yeah. And we move up the continent. We've got the Maasai giraffe, which is predominantly in East Africa. But the small population of Thornycroft giraffe are actually a Maasai giraffe, which is fascinating. Ah, wow. So from genetic side, it's good to know for management purposes, all of these different uh, areas. Then we've got uh, reticulated giraffe, mostly in Kenya, but touching into Ethiopia and Somalia. And then all of the rest running from basically Kenya, Uganda, through Central Africa to West Africa are northern giraffe with a couple okay. of different subspecies. One's called the Nubian. Uh, the Rothschild's giraffe, many people know about, is actually 100% a Nubian giraffe. Wow. So because it was named first, it gets to keep the name. <laughs> then we have Kordofan giraffe across, you know, DRC, Central African yeah. Republic, South Sudan into Cameroon, and then West African giraffe only in Niger or Niger. Uh, the population there is fascinating. It was down to 49 individuals in the mid 90s and now it's above 600. So conservation up there is community based in a desert landscape. Exactly the same here and you can see what the community is doing. Amazing efforts for conservation of wildlife. Yeah. Namibia is, uh, you know, in the last, let's say 30 years alone, there's been an increase of more than 160% of the giraffe population due to good government, private and community based conservation efforts. Yeah. So. Because there's lots of movements of wildlife in the country, like there is in other Southern African countries, we can work with local vets. Essentially also game capture started right here in Namibia. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that, you know, we're happy to trial things, um, you know, not for the, you know, it's, it's the giraffe is still safe. That's the yeah. most important thing, but we'll try different giraffe uh, drug combinations, different techniques for capturing uh, and for translocating. And yeah, we've been able to use what we've learned here over many years now to apply it throughout of most of Africa. And, you know, let's be honest, it all started here and that's pretty exciting for Namibia. The science side of that has been extremely valuable to understand the basics. And now it's being able to use that and apply it for conservation mm. across the continent. And so Southern Africa is booming. It's a really positive conservation success story because what we've seen is a, a growth of 100 to 200% in Southern Africa in just the last 30 years, mm. while almost all of the rest of Africa, East, Central, West Africa, we've seen a massive decline. You know, if you think about, uh, especially in some parts of uh, Central Africa, there's been a 95% decline of giraffe in just the last 30 years. So if we can figure out what flavor giraffe is where, we can help manage it better. And we can work with governments, work with partners, and that's the most critical thing. In all honesty, I don't think we care if it's a species or not. If it's the same type of animal, we want to conserve biodiversity. And giraffe has its own unique biodiversity, and it's something we should conserve. We shouldn't sit back and wait. We should get on with it and do it now before it's too late. So Julian, we've been working, you know, together for the better part of, um, you know, four or five years. Um, and Ultimate Safaris, you know, have partnered with um, Giraffe Conservation Foundation through our Conservation Travel Foundation um, with bringing guests out um, which sort of contribute to the conservation that you, you're doing out here. Um, and that partnership has, I assume, been good. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, we can only do conservation with a whole bunch of things and partnership, whether it be financial, technical, logistics, and all of these have come together through the support of CTF. You know, we've been able to go out and GPS satellite tag, you know, giraffe across the whole of northwest of Namibia, translocate giraffe, understand their genetics and the movements of all these individuals. Definitely, there's no doubt that dollars helps, yeah. you know, we've got to pay the bills, but uh, it is valuable having some extra hands around. Um, you know, Ultimate's got some awesome guys who've helped us catch us 
and giraffe a yeah. few over the years. But yeah, no, it's definitely something. And, and CTF is something that, you know, we obviously want to continue the support with, diversifying our funds and yeah. uh, our support and the awareness that goes around the world. Yeah. And it's something not to underestimate. You know, we're a small team, but by being able to escalate this and having others understand what we do, see it firsthand, they become our best ambassadors around the world. No, definitely. And obviously, you know, we, we're going through a slightly different period at, at the moment. And, you know, we, we are already thinking of next year, you know, once this whole thing blows over. Um, and our, we have guests that are itching to come and, you know, support you guys through the Conservation Travel Foundation. Um, not just funding, but being there for part of the experience and going home and spreading the message, which is ultimately what we need to do for not only giraffe, but all species across Africa. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to have a partnership with, with an organization as yourselves. No, no, we appreciate it very much, mate. We have communicated a lot with our partners over the last few months um, and have developed some really exciting plans and have some projects in the pipeline that will hopefully come to fruition once travel bans are lifted. So that is really, really exciting. Um, but at the same time, um, there have been some negative impacts. We run an environmental education program in Windhoek um, keep the Commerce Environmental Education Program, where we in a normal year take about 2,500 kids and their teachers to Danville Yearn for a day in the field um, and introduce them to their beautiful environment. And that obviously has come to, to an halt. But at the same time, we have used that as an opportunity as well. We have an amazing team of three young Namibians who run this program and they now do educational videos, which hopefully all you guys are looking at. Um, they're pretty awesome, they're self-produced, they had no experience before and now they do this awesome video. So we are really, really proud of them and um, yeah, so that's, that's again positive and negative. But Well, I mean, and I think that's the thing, we, we really want to show the positive side, you know, because mm. there's no negative stories that have helped conservation. But the reality is, you know, likely the dollars have dropped. You know, some of our donors like zoos around the world, they don't have any visitors. So funding support from zoos mm which comes to do our work across parts of Africa, there will be no money for the next year or two. That, that's a reality. We might have squirreled away a few dollars, so I think we've got good conservation management on the one hand, but we've also got solid financial operation management. You know, we've been in this game for quite some time, running NGOs and projects all over the world. So we set aside a bit for that rainy day, and that rainy day is definitely pouring at the moment. Um, but yeah, so... We don't know what it will happen in future. That's, that's the honest truth. You know, we do have some large scale philanthropists who have supported operations like moving giraffe into northwest Namibia. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, we don't know what their businesses are going to do. So we live in hope, um, but it doesn't stop us doing things. You know, at the moment we have, as Steph said, the, the keep team doing stuff. We're out here in northwest Namibia doing this work. We're constantly doing monitoring. We've got uh, one of our veterinarian teams in Uganda who, you know, over this time have continued to desnare animals, anti-poaching support in northern Uganda. We've got Niger team out there figuring out what's going mm. on amongst people, movements of wildlife. Mm. Things are happening and, and that's the reality. We're not stopping just because of COVID. Um, we realise that our team is on the ground and that's the most important thing and many others don't have that luxury. Yeah, positive, definitely. Negative. It's a reality, but mm. prefer to move on. And hopefully all of our partners, especially the tourism guys out there, you know, working with Ultimate Safaris, it's, it's been hard. And we've got lots of mates in the industry here in Namibia, but all over Africa mm. that we, uh, you know, we want to see back up and running because we also get great support from them. And at the moment, uh, we're all trying to do our best. Um, so inshallah. As I stand here in the beautiful surrounds of Camp Unduli, a joint venture between Ultimate Safaris and the Doranawas Conservancy, brings an end to a successful translocation of 14 giraffe from private farmland to communal land. This story is absolutely amazing because it portrays the partnership between NGOs, Giraffe Conservation Foundation being the main NGO, the Conservation Travel Foundation, in partnership and supported by the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. And then, of course, the endorsement by Doranaus Conservancy and its local community members. This is a beginning of a story that is going to be told for years to come as the monitoring of these giraffe, especially 
Ophelia, the female giraffe we were able to name yesterday, and Morpheus, the first male giraffe that was ID'd in this area. It's an honor and a pleasure for our guides to continue the work and work in partnership with GCF to help the Doranaus Conservancy and the surrounding conservancies manage their giraffe in this area, not only for giraffe conservation in Doranaus Conservancy, in Northwest Namibia, in Namibia as a country, but Africa and the world.